Hey guys, this is Mike Tarallo with Click, and in this video, part three of Salesforce and ClickSense working together, I'm going to demonstrate a few more features and capabilities and use cases, as well as some advanced capabilities utilizing the full ClickSense client. So I'm already logged in to my Salesforce application, and at this point here, let's say that I'm a director and I have four reps that are basically working for me, and I have an overview of all of the particular indicators that I need to keep track on. So let's just hide my feed, give us a little bit more field of view. And I'm not going to go through each one of these indicators here. I'm just going to basically show you these KPIs allowing me to keep track of the metrics. But immediately my eyes are brought to this individual rep named Benjamin, who has a closed one forecast of 297,000 and a quota of 600,000. And then based off of these particular indicators here, we can see that Benjamin has a little bit more work to do. So we're going to try to help Benjamin out. So we're going to select Benjamin, and you can see the other visualizations and everything updates, basically showing you global context, allowing me to see relationships based off of my selections in other visualizations. But at this time, I'm going to scroll down and look at this visualization, which is known as a sand key chart. And this shows how much of the pipeline is being transformed over multiple dimensions. In this case, the account owner, stage, and the industry. Now, the thickness of the arrow, or in this case, the flow, shows how much is being transformed in that dimension. So let's say the region is running a services campaign. We're targeting services clients, and marketing has created a pitch for us. So we're basically going to visit high-value opportunities within the services industry and find other accounts nearby related to services. So we're going to select the services particular dimension here. And then we'll scroll down a little bit more. And now we can see all of the services related industry accounts. So if we look at the grand total and we look at the highest one here, we're already sorted descending. So this particular account, Rhesus Donek Ekestas Institute, if I pronounce that correctly, this is one of particular interest. So we're going to link to that account here. So by clicking this, Salesforce link, it brings me directly to that account and then brings up other visualizations and analytics and insights related to that particular account. And you can see viewing 45 accounts within the 50 mile radius of this account. So this is an account map. This is how we can see other accounts within a particular radius of the one that we had particular interest in. Now let me point out a couple of particular items here. So this particular area here is the account information that we drilled into that is brought up within Salesforce. And you can see it has two list boxes. If I click on the industry, you can see this is the selected account. And you can see that it's related to services, what we wanted to look at. Now, the dark gray in this list box is also showing that there are other industries available, but dark gray meaning they're unrelated to the selected account. Now, if I click on customer prospect, you can see that this particular account is also a prospect. Okay, so we verified and validated that information when linking in from the other page earlier. Now, these are other accounts within a certain radius. So while we're visiting this particular prospect, we might want to visit other accounts. So let's increase the radius to, let's say, about 76 miles. And this is going to add additional counts. Now, we can choose, do we want to visit customers or prospects? Well, let's select the industry. And in this case here, all of these are selected in white. So that's showing you that all of these particular accounts that are in this 76 mile radius are all of varying industries. But we're looking for services. So let's just select services. Now, if I click customer and prospect and we expand this, we can also see that these particular accounts are in white, meaning that these are all customers, prospects, or prospect no op recorded. And we can see the distance that they're in. So at this particular area here, we're just gonna look at prospects and this narrows down our search to these additional three accounts. Now, some particular interest in the map, you can see there's account name point layer, and then there's the 30 minute travel area, 45 minute travel area, and 60 minute travel area. And you can see the corresponding colors. So there's one additional prospect it is 12 miles away within a 30 minute travel area. I might want to visit this individual. Okay, so 
we help Benjamin out, he's able to identify a few prospects in an area they can travel to the same day within the services industry based off the campaign that we're launching. Now, the next example that I want to focus on is what we call the traveling salesman. So in this particular example here, we want to find the most optimal route and the ordered itinerary at which to visit these accounts. So let's select account owner, Benjamin again. He's interested in prospects. And this time we're going to select education as the industry. And we'll focus on the state of Oregon. Now his starting location is going to be in Portland. So this is going to actually drop a pin. And this is an example of working with third party mapping APIs externally, just to give you an example. So let's focus in on these particular accounts. They seem relatively close by. So we're going to lasso and select this particular radius. And now you can see it's created a ordered driving route and shows the additional accounts and the locations, as well as where to start. So coming from Portland and then hitting this particular account, then this one and so forth. So this is just an example. They are a bit far apart, but if this was in a city, you could also choose a mode of walking or biking, for example. And you can see it'll actually adjust based off of the transportation mode. So just a pretty simple but cool example I thought I'd share with you. The last thing I'd like to demonstrate is the full ClickSense client experience which gives me access to additional tools and capabilities to help me freely explore data as well as create new analytics. So while I'm logged in with this particular account, which gives me the director level access, you'll notice that my view has a ClickSense tab. If I click on the ClickSense tab, you'll notice there's a embedded ClickSense client inside Salesforce. And this particular tab is linked to a particular app, in this case here, the Click Sales Salesforce Demo app. And I have access to all my particular sheets and so forth. And pointing out also the account owner, being I am the director, the account owner list has all of the reps available. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to tab over to a new salesforce.com session and log in with a different ID. Now, when I do that, my security parameters are applied and those security parameters and attributes could be fed from Salesforce over through integrated security into ClickSense using, for example, something like SAML, S-A-M-L. And now I am greeted with a view of data that only I'm allowed to see. And these are examples of the embedded charts and embedded sheets inside my homepage. And you'll notice that I'm logged in as Benjamin. Now, I don't have a ClickSense tab here. So that is available in this menu and I can click on ClickSense and it shows me an embedded version of ClickSense for that particular configured app. And here it defaults to wealth sales. I'm going to navigate to the actual hub and this is the full ClickSense client experience, which gives me access to streams or spaces that organize and secure apps and content. So by default, we have financial services, but we also have sales. These are all the apps that are available in the sales stream. And there's that app that was embedded into Salesforce. We're going to click that app. And then once again, as I've mentioned, the full ClickSense client experience, we have access to all the sheets. Now these are the sheets that were embedded within Salesforce and you can control whether someone has access to this or not, but you'll notice there's a section here for me to create my own insights. So what I'm going to do is navigate to the first dashboard sheet. And remember, this was the sheet that we saw earlier at the director level. If I click the account owner, notice that I only see Benjamin Fernandez now. So that was a quick example that showed you how Salesforce credentials can pass along into the ClickSense environment and control visibility of the data. Now, in this example, I'm going to demonstrate some additional capabilities and features and create my own insights with the full ClickSense client. So I'm going to log into Salesforce once again, but this time with the director level credentials. And I'm going to navigate to the ClickSense embedded full client inside Salesforce. 
And here it's automatically linked to the particular demo app. I'm going to go to Open Hub, and this will put the full ClickSense client in a new browser tab. And you can see I have access to the sales stream, where Benjamin also had access to the financial services stream. And there's our app that was embedded earlier. We're now going to click it. And you can see we're in the full ClickSense client experience where we have access to base sheets or visualizations and sheets that have been approved and published, as well as the ability to create our own and then also see other sheets that other people have published. I'd like to build my own analytics based off of the initial dashboard that you have here. Now, just to keep in mind, you've seen this already. You can select any of the visualizations and explore data freely. Everything updates automatically. There isn't any manual wiring of these visualizations due to the nature of the global context of our associative engine, etc. We don't have to worry about this. I'm just going to clear these selections. I'd like to create my own insights. I'd like to convert this to a distribution plot because I'd like to see the distribution of the industries related to the accounts by the measure closed, won, or closed, lost. So in this case here, what I'm going to do is click Duplicate because I can now build that off of this existing base sheet. Now by clicking Duplicate and going into the Dashboard Sheet Selector, you can see that I have that copy of that sheet located under a section called My Sheets. So what I'm going to do is we're gonna just create a copy of this and I'm gonna use the keyboard shortcut Control C and then Control V and it creates a copy of it. I go to charts and from all my visualizations available, I'm gonna choose my distribution plot, drop it on the chart and then select convert. And then I'm going to go to master items, which is a collection of governed reusable assets, measures, dimensions, visualizations. And I'm gonna look for my dimension I'm going to search for my industry and I'm going to drop that directly on my distribution plot. And here we're going to add. So now we have our distribution plot. Now we can change this to say instead of lost by account, we can say lost by industry. Now we're a little cramped here, but we have a solution for that. We could extend the sheet and I could make this a scrolling sheet, or we can go into our chart objects and I'm going to grab this container object and just drop it in this little empty space here and then take both of these and drop them right on top of the container object. And then take the container object and put it in this empty spot. And now you can see I have both charts inside the container object that I can tab through. Now within the distribution chart, I want to just change a simple property and then click Edit Properties. And then I can manipulate any of the chart adjustment properties. So here we'll go to Presentation and just turn Jitter Points on so we can see where the points lie for the different accounts. So if I go into Analysis Mode, we can hover over and get more information. Now I want to add one more visualization, so I'm going to extend the sheet. And then here inside master items, under visualizations, these are prepared visualizations that I can use and build and adjust the chart properties to. I'm just going to select basic account map. And now I have another visualization that's been added. And being on the director level, I can see all the accounts within the United States. So you've seen how I was able to take a particular existing visualization and convert it to another visualization and add my new fields or reuse a visualization that is part of the master items library. But if I wanted to create one from scratch, I could select any of the charts and any of the dimensions and measures and build it and adjust the properties. But I also have the ability to search existing visualizations in my app, answer questions, and also use chart suggestions and recommendations from our visual insights. And to do that, I can go into our analysis mode and then click on the insights tab. And what this will do is scan all of my data and my fields. And without any input at this point, it will actually make recommendations based off of what it thinks are the most significant insights simply by clicking generate insights. 
and this uses sophisticated algorithms and data literacy techniques to produce a visualization of results that might be meaningful to you. However, you have the opportunity to train the engine to produce more significant results. We have video content that goes deeper into that. I'm not going to cover that here, but I'm going to give you an example just of a chart suggestion that I'm interested in. All I have to do is, for example, select a measure such as closed lost, and then for the dimensions, maybe the account owner and the particular industry. And you can see based off of the structure of the data, in this case, we're looking at the measure closed lost, the account owner dimension and the industry dimension, it created a tree map. In this case here, we can see each individual rep. And then underneath that, you can see the associative industries. So I'm going to add that to my sheet. Now, if we go into edit mode, you can see that visualization has been added. So another great way of creating a visualization based off of what you know and the power of the cognitive engine and augmented intelligence creating that visualization for you. Okay, so that's it for this demonstration of ClickSense working together with Salesforce. There's more content such as this available in the Click community and on the Click YouTube channel. Please be sure to check out these and other great resources to learn more about Click and ClickSense. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you on the next video. Take care.